this market at the moment is struggling, you know, it's struggling so much. The business is not the same anymore. You see a lot of units are closed. The reason is this place are too much rent, too much expensive. I've been there since my mum was there before the building. And uh, I was there when I was 16. So it's in the blood? Uh, yeah. yeah. And been there since then? Yeah. 15 minutes. modern society awash with um, big brand consumerism and glistening developments like the bullring, we sometimes forget about the traditional markets that places such as Birmingham have and so many people now, especially younger people, they're just so used to this being the side of modern Birmingham. But when I was a kid, the bullring, which is just the other side of the new development here, that was where everyone came to find all the little shopping and hidden delights. And these days, I think younger people, they don't really visit markets so much anymore. And they have they've kind of like missed the absolute thrill that it can be hunting through markets and meeting all these eccentric and uh, like big personality traders that are in the markets. So like when I was a kid, all this wasn't here, all these shiny, gleaming buildings, these, uh, these temples to consumerism. And this area was quite down on its look, to be honest. It was quite rough down here, around by the bullring, at the back of the rotunda. None of these restaurants. And the markets were still here, but they were, um, they were a bit of an edgy place to be. You really had to have your wits about you to come down here and know what you were doing. And then, maybe about 15 years ago, I mean, this had already started happening, but then it just grew and grew and grew and kind of engulfed the markets. And then recently, the Bullring markets and the world famous rag market, we're going to visit them all in a bit. They've had a bit of a resurgence. People have realised that they are a gem of Birmingham and that they should not be looked over. So there's a few things I need to get today in the market. We'll probably start out here in the outdoor market with the fruit and veg. We'll see what they've got to sell. We'll see if we can meet any of the uh, traders, which by default they have to have big personalities because it's all about bartering and bargaining. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to showing you a side of Birmingham that when people come and visit here, they don't really pay too much attention to. Let's check it out. So the first thing I'll say as I wander around is so many people are so used to getting their fruit and veg and their meat and their fish and many other things from the big supermarkets now like your Asda's and your Sainsbury's that they forget about the experience of coming to these places and how good and how fresh the produce is. You might pay a little bit more, we're not sure. Let's find out today. But you definitely get a better experience, you get to pick what you want and I mean the, the fruit and veg looks awfully fresh. Loads of spices and chilies, ginger. What are the hottest chilies, my friend? The hottest ones? The red one, yeah. Oh, the green ones here. Do you know which type of chili it is? Bird's eye. Bird's eye, yeah. Yeah, I know bird's eye, yeah. So this chap here, he's uh, throwing out the market lingo, trying to get people's attention to come to his store. There's lots of competition. Beautiful fresh produce. When you, when you go down to Sainsbury's, you don't get as good quality fresh produce as this. You don't mind me filming, mate, do you? No? I'm making a video about trying to get young people to come and visit markets because they don't do it anymore. Fresh, fresh, yeah. fresh diet. And how long have you been here, mate? 40 years. 40 years, yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to show people, but like, especially the younger generation, younger than me, they're not used to coming to this type of environment anymore. And they're so used to going to Asda and Sainsbury's. The quality in is good. They don't make characters like you. Uh, Proper brummies, yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, this was like this was where we were bought to come and do our shopping. Probably then, wasn't it? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. So how is it today? Like because of how everything's changed, does it? Well, you could play football in the oil. Yeah. Yeah. Just have a look. There's normally there'd be people everywhere. Right. People all out there. Yeah. Nothing like that. So why do you stick at it? 
after all these years? It's in your blood. It's in your blood, isn't it? Yeah. So. Were, your, were your parents the market traders no, as well? No, 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 no you just, just come from school. Cam as a young lad. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you're always in this spot. I, I am now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, when, I've been here for like the last five years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do you find it like, like in general, like compared to 30 years ago? Oh, do you find it easier to make money or harder? Or? A lot harder now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot harder. And do you find like, you know, like with a cost of living crisis and all that jazz, do you find that like less people are that they're choosing? Or? But you're just having to explain to all your customers all your prices are going to be. Like the chain of it, it, costs. You know, that's it really easy. Yeah. Our prices go up. They're what we have to pay for. So you've got to put that little bit extra on, but the customers don't seem to realise. Yeah. yeah. I don't think half of them watch the news. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I'm at the, like for five years I've been living in Cornwall yeah. and down there it's more of a rural society yeah, yeah. so people kind of understand the farm to table chain a bit more but in a big city with like two three million people like that sometimes they think it just arrives on the plate don't they? Uh, they, they? They all think it's everything here it should be a pound every you see the pound of bowl for yeah. I think everything should be a pound yeah why is it in pain? I don't, okay. don't realise you've got to make your money, the farmer's got to make his money, how much it costs for him to energise the farm. Yeah. yeah. He's only from it in the pound of bowls, the stuff I buy is not fresh. Yeah. So of course, yeah. And you can tell when you look at it, like, you know, if I pick up a lettuce from Sainsbury's, it's always got wilted brown edges and, yeah. So already you can see the personalities and like the real people that are behind all the fruit and veg here whereas when you get to the big supermarkets it's just it's just like soulless you know you're giving your money to corporations that are just there to feed their shareholders and these are people that have been here for like Steve there for 40 years how are you mate I'm very nice, good, to, meet nice you. to meet you yeah what's your name buddy my name's Sammy. Sammy, yeah. yeah. I'm Ollie. Yeah. So what are you and selling here? You're all like citrus fruits and. I normally sell. I sell everything in a display, in a nice uh, display. You know, like uh, for example, like beetroot, cabbage, everything. But today, just like you know, just yeah. get rid of them cheaper. Yeah. And how long have you been here? I think eight years now. Eight years. Yeah. And have you noticed business changed since the cost of living crisis? It, it changed so much. Yeah. Uh, you find it hard? It very changed. Yeah. Is it, no, honestly. This market at the moment is struggling, you know, it's struggling so much. I've noticed the last time I popped through here was like two, three years ago and there were a lot more stalls. There was more traders there before, there was more stalls before. Now you can see so many tables are empty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see that, like yeah. I would never see this yeah. before, but you don't need the produce out. Yeah, that's the reason why, you know, when the Corona virus started, you know, from that time, the uh, market changed totally. It's changed so much. You know, because there was, you know, before there was a parking, you know, car parking, you know. Uh, that's been uh, demolished, you know, it's gone, finished, you know. So yeah. Now, you know, when the new, uh, you know, the old uh, cars is coming, you know, they, they have to pay like, yeah. like I, nine pounds, eight pounds. So. Is it? Yeah. So, so I, I've come in in my old car today and I've realised I've got to pay nine quid on top of my parking. Exactly. And people have got to put that on top of the price of buying the veg yeah. and they end up in Asta. Exactly. And they might be thinking, if I go there paying uh, eight pounds, nine pounds, I should spend that in my local shop, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, but here most people coming locals, you know, they get good stuff, like cheap stuff. The market is no as before, you know, it's totally changed. Yeah, yeah. So you find it difficult in the current climate, yeah. yeah. I don't want to get in the way of sales. So. Thank yeah, you, young yeah. man. Nice Thank to you. Me. Yeah, we're trying to get more people to the market, mate. Again, I only have to walk another 10, 15 feet and another seller who's saying that he's struggling in the current climate, corona, then the cost of living. Of course, this isn't everything in the market, so there's a wonderful fish market just down over by the back of Digbeth. I'll try and find my way over there, but it has been like five years properly since I've been around all this area. And then there's also the meat market where I have to visit because I have to pick up some meat. How are you, mate? You right? Yeah, I'm just making a video trying to get younger people to come to the market. I've kind of forgotten what this is all about, you know what I mean? So, yeah. You don't mind me filming, do you? Caribbean stuff. Caribbean stuff, yeah. yeah. Mainly specialised in Caribbean veg, yeah. So the other thing that it's absolutely amazing for is if you want to make a really authentic like um, Caribbean food or an authentic curry or other different amazing ethnic foods because the area is so multicultural. 
you've got so many amazing like exotic ingredients that you can't really find of this quality in the supermarket. To me, like this is this is the spirit of true old Brum, true old Birmingham. Real people, full of personality, full of character, proper Brummies, trading, bartering, trying to make ends meet. You can see lots of uh, lots of hats and all that. Loads of mobile phone places too. Workwear, it's a good place to come and get workwear if you need it. Like, look at that. Five pounds for a fluorescent hat with a light on. You know, you can buy those for like 20, 25 quid if they're branded. Yeah, uh, we in here about 15, 16 years. But yeah. in the business last 45 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. where did you move from 15 uh, years ago? From uh, Mary Hill, Swan Centre, we were there a long time. King Z, yeah. that was a long time. They closed the high street, uh, King Zeet. Yeah. Um, it's about uh, probably 10 years now. Yeah. So probably a bit more than 10, but time is flying, isn't it? And how, how do you find, like, you know, like with Corona and then the cost of living crisis? How has that affected trade? Yeah, a person like me, and my kids and none, none of them in the business now. A person like me, I don't eat out, I don't go, I don't drink, nothing. Yeah. yeah still very hard. Yeah. 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 Because the business is not the same anymore. Yeah. What I've got to put in the back in the stock and yeah. if you don't do that, take all your wages out, you don't get, get nothing. You can't have a stock. The thing that's, it, like, as I'm walking around, the interesting thing is that, like, you've got to keep your... Like, it's got to look really full, hasn't it? Yeah. So all the profit oh, you've got yes. to put back in the stock. You know, people will walk past a market stall that looks half empty, won't they? Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's got to be, like, Magic. overflowing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope I cost you a sale. Yeah, back. straight back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Back so in you're not me. living the high life off it, uh, No, 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 yeah. no. You can't afford to. Yeah, I better not cost you a sale then. This man's <laughs> looking at buying a high vis no, and no, you're no. talking to me. Don't yeah, Don't nice worry. to meet you. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Uh, Palvindico. Palvindico, yeah. 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 My, I'm Ollie. Tandy's, thank you. Tandy's, yeah. I'll make sure I tell people to come and see oh, you. Okay. Like, you know, 20 quid for a body warmer then. People pay like 80 quid for a North Face one. And you can pick up these things. 20 quid. So you're quite like, obviously like people are so used to just going to the high street or ordering off with the Amazon yeah, these days. The like, yeah. are you like more competitive in here and you've clearly got a bigger range. We've got a much bigger range and we're a lot cheaper than them as well. Yeah, so like how much is like, like lots of young people, I'm trying to get their attention yeah, more. Yeah. Like, I mean, my screen is broke at the moment. What phone is it? Uh, well, I don't know, what's that? Is that a 12 or a 13? Yours is a cover that's broken, isn't it? Yeah. Five pounds. The glass, Five pounds? Yeah, yeah. I'll get one off you anyway. Yeah. 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 So yeah. not only have I filmed you, but I'll, I'll get one off you instead. Do you <laughs> fit them as yeah, well? I'll put, I'll put them in, no Do you take card as well? It's only cash. Only cash. Yeah. Is there an ATM anywhere nearby? Do you know what Dibbenham's is? No. Plus the Dibbenham's right opposite inside the car park. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. If you if you do it, I'll yeah. go and. Yeah, no, Shall I come back to you in a sec? Yeah, I'm no. all in my phone. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your name, mate? My name's Omar. Omar. Ollie. Ollie. Close, but almost not. I'll come back in a sec, mate. Alright. So there you go, see, that's how trusting Wendell is. I've left my phone with Omar. He's not going anywhere. And I'm gonna get some cash out from near Debenhams, wherever the hell that is. I can't even look on my phone to see where Debenhams is. So at last, I've managed to find some cash. It is really hard to find a cash machine in this area. I think so many places are used to paying, like taking card payment. I've been walking around for 20 minutes trying to find some cash. Do you take card as well? That's an yes, interesting you question. Take, yeah. You take card. See, I've just spent 20 minutes trying to find some cash because I'm getting my phone fixed. No, 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 no take card. It is so hard to find cash around here. Probably because I don't know where I'm going as well. I was thinking, I hope he hasn't lost my phone. Five here, yeah? So this lady's got all um, like exotic spices and dried fruits. Afghani cherries, corn nuts, a lot of these I don't know what they are. You can buy boxes of like mixed, looks like Bombay mix to me, but a bit more exotic than that. Seeds, chili coated nuts, dried fruits, much use in the uh, in the cocktail industry that I've worked in. And these like sweet, like truffly sweets as well, reminds me of when I was in Morocco. Every different corner you turn, is a different delight. Who would want to go to Pets at Home when you can come here? How long have you been here? Um, uh, I've been here 
just after lockdown, so what's that? Is that three, years? three years? Yeah. I, the last time I came to the market, because I live in Cornwall, but the last time I came, you were here. And I remember thinking, who would want to go to Pets at Home? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Where do you live in Cornwall? I live near Penzance at the moment. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been down there for about five years. Yeah. But I just, like, you know, every, every, like, I'm 40. And like everyone below me in age, like they're so used to just going to the ball ring, ordering on Amazon, going to pets at home. And they don't realise that they're giving all this, it's inferior products, they're giving all this money to shareholders who don't care. Oh, I love it. I love and then it. there's you here, you <laughs> yeah. know, small business, just you. I'm the congestion charge. To yeah. Come in. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a congestion charge. Like I've driven in, I'm in my old knacker because the missus has got the good car. And I'm going to have to, on top of my parking, I'm going to have to pay nine quid. Thank you. Thank yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is, there is pollution problems, but, but that doesn't help you no. getting people to come to the market, does it? And, and why would you want to come in when it's over like £15, you know, or whatever it is? Yeah. Um, you know, for your parking and, and your charge, it's really made a big difference to us. Does it really? Yeah, yeah. It's so, when fun. did the charge come in? Um, oh, God, you know, after Covid, I can never remember when, when things happened. Um, but we, we had a year, so it was just after COVID, and we had a year that we could, uh, we, we didn't have to pay. And then, of course, you either have to pay or you have to change your car, don't you? you yeah. Know, so that, yeah, yeah but, but they did give us a year to, to sort of get used to it. But, of course, our customers aren't in a position to change the car. I mean, like, let, like let's be, I mean, they're trying to stop people using old cars of because course. they want people on electric cars and all this. Yeah. But, like... Let's, I mean, let's be frank, like, you know, like the type of people that come and, like, shop at markets, like, they're not driving around in 50 grand new cars, are they? Like, I'm not, you know? So, and then, but then you, you're stopping people like yourself from getting people in because they're going to have to pay 15 quid before they've even started or they can park at Pets at Home for free. But the quality's not there, is it? Like, here, like, the range and the quality and... Yeah. It's all tested out on our dogs. Yeah, tested out on your dogs. How <laughs> yeah. many dogs have you got? I've got, um, I've got two. I've got two. Uh, yeah. But like my, my daughter has one, and all yeah. the family. We just, we are just animal lovers. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I um, I sometimes like you know like I've done all sorts of jobs and it's stressful and it's rubbish. You know, sometimes I wish I could just drop it all and just do something like this or like like open a kennels. You know what I mean? Or yeah, because yeah. I'm never happier than when I'm with dogs. Yeah. But like it's so nice to come in here and see this and I'm just trying to get younger people to be more interested. I don't work here my love, no, I'm just, I'm making a video for YouTube. Let's see if we can find the fish and meat. I did see it from the outside earlier when I was looking for my, um, for my money, for my cash, which I've now got. So now I can smell fish, so it seems like we're in the right place. But I mean, even the last time I was in here, like a couple of years ago, all these cabinets were full of fish and meat, halal butchers, and then uh, now, empty, all empty. Look at the fish folks, look at this. How long have you guys been here? Okay. <laughs> He's the best looking one here, <laughs> apart from me. Russia. About five years. Yeah, mate, yeah. Wendell explores. So, um, have you found things like since the bloody cost of living crisis and all that, have you found it more difficult or are people still coming to you? No, I'm not as much. Yeah, I've just found, so I live in Cornwall and I've come back like I'm visiting. And I didn't know, but you've got to pay nine quid just to drive into the city. Yeah, yeah, it's going to sting me. Yeah. So that's affected things, has it, mate? Oh, so you're still quite busy? Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't replace this experience. That's what I'm trying to tell people. As a kid, I used to come here like 25 years ago with my parents and just like the people and the experience and the freshness and the quality like people have forgotten about that because now everyone goes to Asta yeah I'll leave you to it mate thank you they seem to have all like the different off cuts in this cabinet so you've got chicken feet turkey gizzards chicken gizzards you've got cow skin tripe lots of the old things that people used to eat and won't eat anymore Cow cheeks, sorry my love, I'm just 
filming the food. You don't see that in Asda for sure. Liver, heart, you've got stomachs there as well. Tongue. All the things that your grandparents probably used to eat. More like tripe and stomach, lungs and liver. So a lot of the things that we call awful, but you know, years and years ago our grandparents used to eat. I'm looking for some steak or some mince or some meatballs because I'm going to treat Vicky's parents for putting me up for the last few days. Let's see what we got. Chicken, liver and heart. Hi mate. Yeah, I'm making a video trying to get more people to visit the market yeah. and not to do Sainsbury's and Asda and all yeah, that. That's good enough. And the experience, like meeting the real people yes. that know what they're doing. I'm actually looking, do you do like meatballs? No. Sometimes, you, we have it, but sometimes. Okay. Meatball, cowball, sometimes. Yeah. you got steaks yeah. and stuff, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we have steaks also. So what sort of cuts you got? Can you show me? Yeah. These guys are beef specialists. Okay. Then so, he's my man. Yeah. yeah. We have a big piece of beef. Yeah. But we make the steaks for customer demand. Yeah, sure. If customer want, we do for slice. How beef, many grams? Beef, yeah. Yeah, whatever he look at. And, um, and what cuts have we got here? We have an African food related to beef. We have a beef brisket, yeah. we have a beef neck, yeah. shoulder, yeah. T-bone, yeah. shin with bone, shin boneless, beef boneless, rump, top side, silver side, yeah. uh, sunline, yeah. long fillet, every part of beef. Can you get me like just a nice, like, I don't know, like a nice 20 ounce piece of sirloin? 20 ounce. Yeah, sirloin. something like that, you know. It's for two uh, slightly older people to share. Can I film your slicing as well? Is that okay? Yeah, you want to do it, mate? Yeah, cheers. Yeah, just point. Okay, Kafa? Two slices, good one. Yeah. Shall we scale the put it on a scale? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can show everyone the weight. Yes. That one, 10, 20, 10 pounds for you, brother. Yeah, no okay. problem. Okay. And already that seems yes, sort of already, a wee yeah. bit cheaper than Asda and all yes, that. Yes, you know. You, yeah. Yeah. If you compare to the Asda, Sansbury, even LD. LD, yeah. they are cheaper, cheaper. Yeah, yeah. And all your food's halal here, yes. is it? Yeah. Check the shop name also. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shop name. Biz, Bismali, yeah, Bismillah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have you guys been here trading? It's uh, we're trading last uh, 10 years. 10 years, yeah. 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 But this market is more than 50 years. Yeah. And we are trading in this shop is maybe 10 to 12 years. When I was a kid, I, like my parents used to yeah. bring me here, like I live away now, I live in yeah. Cornwall, but I just wanted to come back and make a video. Because like, you know, like so many things have changed in Birmingham. But this is, this is like what I remember of old Birmingham. But still, you see a lot of units are closed. The reason is, this place are too much rent, too much expensive. That's why, and uh, the call is a concert market, but concert do don't any kind of publicity attract the customer. Customer come here to serve, no, and basic no parking at all. Yeah, no free parking. And the congestion charge. Yes, I didn't even know about that. I haven't been back here for two years, and I've just drove in and yeah. realised. You never came here. It's straight away fine. We have a goat, we have a lamb, we have a chicken. Everything in a, under one roof. Yeah, yeah. More people need to do it, but it's made like. The situation's making it harder for people to do it with yes. the parking and the charges. Uh, uh, parking, main issue is the parking. Yeah, yeah. And you make picture the certificate also. Yeah, sure, I'll leave it there. These are the heat related certificates. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yes. So there you can see, folks, as well. Yes, you can exactly. see the process, you can see what's happening as you're here. You can see they've got certificates, you can see like the produce, you don't know what's happening to your food in the factory before it gets to Asda. Ten. Best of luck, gents. Thank you. Nice to meet you, yeah? Cheers. So you've got some... Uh, oh, I'm spoilt for choice, to be honest. I am spoilt for choice. Beautiful cuts of fresh fish. I think I filmed over there already. You've got the Chinese mini market there as well. Some more cloves, some more sari, silks, things like that. Yeah. So how long have you been here? 
I've worked in the market since I was 11. Yeah. Really cool, you know. 78 now. Yeah. yeah. A bit like me. Yeah. <laughs> looking at, just like me, we're looking right for pushing 80, yeah, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. But I'm trying to show people like that you don't get the experience that, like you know when you get to ask to remember as well in the supermarket they only really have the price. No one looks at the weight of what they're buying no. really, you no. know what I mean? So Yeah. And so many things like you know, cuts of meat and things are like pumped full of water and all that and you cook them and they shrink and crap. Yeah. 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 Even when you take the fish out of the packets, it's not good quality. No, nah. stinks. You don't know how old it is. Yeah. What's that, the veg? Yeah, when it opened up, the fucking peppers and everything, didn't put it on the shelves. No. What, what do you mean by didn't put it on the shelves? All the veg went up, didn't have no veg in the shops. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have that in there. Yeah. Is that why it all disappeared off the shelves? Yeah. yeah. So they just they, they just stuck it to any customer because they would have kept it in there and not earned for So they really. couldn't make the money, so they took yeah, it off the shelves. Yeah, yeah. Would have been so, too expensive. So. Look at these oysters, folks. Sorry, mate. Just filming the oysters. You can see all these empty stalls, though, folks. Even two years ago, when I was here, everything. Every stall was full, and now I'd say they're like about 60% vacant. This lady's got a lot of African staple foods, like tinned and packaged African foods. She doesn't really want to be on camera, but you know, like there's such a diverse community here in Birmingham that you know people from these communities can come over to her African food and get the stuff that they're used to at home. It's just so exotic and just so. Um, so interesting to someone that's lived in Cornwall for so long, I've almost forgotten that Birmingham, you know, it's so multicultural, it's an absolute gem. All these boarded up shops, boarded up stalls, it's heartbreaking. So even like, maybe like two, three years ago when I was last here, all these places were open. I don't know if I'm here on a bad day, like where I don't, I mean it's a Friday, I don't know if a lot of places don't open on a Friday, but it looks to me like, Appointments being taken. There's so many closed stalls. These people have moved Abbott's Cards and News. They've moved to somewhere else near West Bromwich. The Barbers is still going there. Don't know how long they've been there. A lot of their customers seem like they might have been visiting them for a long time. But it's so sad to see all these closed stalls in the market here it's just it seems for Birmingham a triple whammy like the two things that have affected everywhere like the uh, obviously the coronavirus and being closed for so many months over a two-year period and then on top of that parking charges congestion charges changes in consumer spending as well like shopping online more or going to big supermarkets going to outlet malls places like that and then the real heart of places like Birmingham just dying away. Sad to see. And hopefully more people can see videos like this and realise that what's left we can't lose. Chinese cuisine there. But early in the day for me to do that. I wish I could spend money at every place but I've only got a limited budget myself and a limited amount of time. Asian and Filipino specialised packaged food as well. Some more specialised goods for the different ethnicities in this really multicultural city. The amounts of different spices and marinades for all these different meats you can get. Masaman curry paste. Masaman, one of my favourite Thai curries. Green tom yun, the taste of Thailand. Then like Malaysian um, flavourings as well. Satay. Thai custard mix? Wow. You can't find this stuff in your big supermarket. This is one of the things that I quite miss now that I live in Cornwall, while I'm still there at the moment, is you just don't have these types of places because the, the population, like the demographics aren't the same. There's no need. These things don't really crop up. Crispy Thai rolls, all these different Asian snacks, crispy seaweed. How long have you been here? So how long is that? 30 years. 30 years. 
This is what I'm trying to tell people, like the characters and the people that are here, the people that know the industry inside out. And they're all, you know, these days, people younger than me, they don't even know these markets are a thing. I've been here since my mum was there before the boring, and uh, I was there when I was 16. So it's in the blood? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I've been here since then? Yeah. 59. <laughs> And how are things like since Corona uh, and the cost was, of living? It was better before then. It was alright before when they moved in here. But then the council stopped the traffic. Yeah. They're charging people to come to town. Yeah. It, that's in the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. And then now people have to like, come to town to like, spend a fiver. They have to pay eight pound just to come to the market. Just to enter. Yeah. To yeah. Enter. So then they got a park. Yeah. And they got a park. So now very few people are coming to town. Yeah. Uh, even so, the buses don't go to stop here, but they don't stop anymore. So it just seems like you're like running an uphill battle. Yeah. 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 But, but instead they're closing it down anyway, they're going to build another one. Yeah. So I'm going to go to that. So like, how, like, is it different? I mean, in the last two years, yeah. I've noticed that like all these stalls are empty. Well, the bigger stalls have closed down because their rent is massive. Yeah. Yeah. So do you pay by square foot? Uh, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And what do you specialise in here? Like all Caribbean yeah, just stuff? Like fresh, uh, fresh food. Yeah. African and Caribbean food. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What we got here? What are these? Just, uh, yams. Yams, that's and, it, uh, yeah. Sweet potato, sweet. Yeah. This is uh, called um, Matoko. Different from green bananas. Yeah. What are they called, sorry? Matoke. Matoke. Yeah. They cook softer than the green bananas. And are, are all they like indigenous to like like the Caribbean uh, in general? From Uganda. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. They've been on quite a journey to get here, yeah. yeah. And what about where do yams grow? The yams they grow from the, 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 going Africa really, but these are from Ghana. Yeah. Uh, so how do you make these contacts to like buy yams from Ghana? Like how, no, how, how does that work? Because really, we've got the horse market. It's yeah. The horse market. They got stuff there from all over the place. So you're like another link in the chain, really, yeah, yeah. from farm yeah. to table. They bring this over there. We go to the horse market to buy. It. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. if, if I had to get it from there, it'd be too much money. To yeah. Too yeah. Or well, you need to buy such large amounts to yeah, make it worthwhile. Get, uh, and here, in your little stall. Yeah. Yeah. So many things, but I mean, like, I, I moved to Cornwall like five years ago, and it doesn't have the same demographic in its population as here. So, like, coming around and all the different smells and the spices and like yams and what are they called again? Uh, Matoka. Matoka and plantain. Like, you just you don't get that, and I really miss it. No. Yeah. And what are these here? These are like pig's tail Jamaicans like these stuff. I don't know why. How, how do I cook them? Uh, just like, just cook like normal meat, just chop it up and put it in. Um, um, what can you beans? Yeah. And then just make a soup out of it or something. Okay, yeah. So there we go, folks. The wonders and delights of the sadly dwindling Birmingham markets. i got to go back now and pay my clean air congestion charge or whatever it's called, which I didn't even know about until I drove into the city, and my astronomical parking charges. But I just hope that this makes some people realise that we can't lose these things, that these... Uh, these traditional ways of coming and getting your meat and your fish, your fruit and your veg, in not, not just Birmingham but around the country, that if we don't use them we lose them and it's really important that we hang on to them I think because you've seen the fun I've had today here hanging around in the bullring markets. Thanks for watching folks, until next time, ride on.